Three months ago, we launched our biggest competition ever. Now, after receiving thousands of entries from all around the world, we at Copa 90 have selected 18 finalists spread across six continents. And now it's time for you, the Copper fam, to decide. Welcome to Copper 90's In Search Of. And so after five incredible continents, In Search Of moves on to its final leg, North and Central America. And we begin it here in Mexico City with Rodrigo Lara. Hello Copa fam, I'm Rodrigo Lara and welcome to Mexico City! So we are here at the Azteca Stadium in Mexico City, one of the biggest stadiums in the world. 110,000 capacity. The atmosphere in a match day is absolutely amazing. It's every kid's dream to play here at the Azteca Stadium. And I got to live that dream when I was a teenager playing a couple times for Pumas Academy. So this stadium was built in 1966 and we host two World Cups, Mexico 1970 when Pelé, the king of football, won the cup you will remain. And Diego Armando Maradona in the World Cup 1986 won the FIFA World Cup in this incredible stadium. We are in La Cantera, Pumas a training ground facilities where I got all my football education, passion and love. I'm very thankful for what this place has given me. This place has produced some of the best players in Mexico, such as a Jorge Campos and Hugo Sanchez. This is insane. We've seen some training complexes with Copa Nani, but this tops the lot. You feel like you're in the middle of a, a Bond villain there. When I was a young lad, I used to dream, oh, I want to play for Liverpool, I want to play in Anfield, I want to play next to Stevie G, and also because I love the Beatles. So you went and flew out to Liverpool just for that? Yes, just for that and for learning English and to live and to make my dream come true in, in, in another country. Yeah, I used to work very hard as a builder, saving up, just saving up, just for pay for my ticket games in the Premier League or in the Champions League. at the Azteca Stadium to see what Mexican football is all about. Let's check it out! Rodrigo, that was insane. I've got to tick off a football bucket list by going to the Azteca, by seeing Club America. Thank you, man. That was that's amazing. You get that every week? Uh, yes, normally every week you can get all this taste of atmosphere in Mexican football. Unbelievable, man. You're a lucky man. So why would it mean so much for you? Obviously, as you know, I have the passion for football. I used to play football. I studied journalists. I did a lot of interviews in the past. I travel the world and I live in uh, different countries, always trying to find different stories in football by myself. Also, using all my uh, network and connections in football, trying to bring the best and exclusive stories for, for the channel and for the viewer. So from Mexico City, where it felt like more than 40 degrees, we've moved to Toronto, where it feels like minus 40 to meet our second finalist, Alessandro Coluccio. Copa fam, it's been a journey, but we finally made it. I'm Alessandro Coluccio, and this is the T-Doc, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. But don't let the cold weather and the hockey sticks fool you. This country has football frenzy. And one person who's got that especially is Eli, capo of the Inibriati. Now let's go meet him. Eli, what is the Inibriati? The Inibriati is a bunch of drunken idiots who are passionate about Toronto FC and uh, we're passionate about Toronto as a city. When, when you support Toronto FC, it's because 
it's it's you might be supporting a, a football club, but it, it's it's representative of the city that we live in, the city that that we we our families are in, we work in. It's, it's where our lives are. For us, after after finally so many years of, of, of not having a like a high level professional football team to have it here, it's important to support it so that it becomes sustainable and viable and 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 uh, continues to thrive in, in the market here and, and, and represent our city. Ellie, I wanted you to try a landmark Canadian dish. It's called poutine. Canadian custom. You come to Canada, that's what you got to have. This is Canadian heaven, my god. Canadian heaven. How about the Americans like to eat? Toronto is a city whose identity has always been built on multiculturalism. And a perfect example of that is an area like this. We're here on College Street in Little Italy, Toronto. And neighborhoods and communities like this is where Italian immigrants were able to create a home for themselves in a new country. With cafes, restaurants, barbershops, and social clubs, they were able to come together like the family they were to watch the beautiful game that they all know and love. Football is so important, so when you move to Canada, especially early on when, you know, soccer over here, that wasn't even a thing prior to the MLS. They weren't gonna live here and not be able to watch a, a, a cultural game. They weren't gonna live here and not be able to sport an Italy jersey. Like, that's unheard of. Taking you guys to my father's barbershop out here in Brampton in the GTA. Your dad's a barber? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, nice. I'm a, I'm a true SOB, I'm a son of a barber. <laughs> my mother, God bless her soul, she didn't realize that when she booked a 12-hour train ticket from Calabria to Torino, she did so on July 9th, which was the final. The only way I was able to watch the final was on a satellite TV with an antenna. Penalty kicks comes around. Del Piero was about to step up. I hit a tunnel, a 15-minute tunnel. When I come out of the tunnel, Fabio Cannavaro has the World Cup in his hand. I looked at my mom, and she's looking at me, and I just, I go, Roma, you owe me a World Cup. <laughs> My father passed down this sport to me and my brothers. And maybe one day a father like myself in North America would be able to pass this sport down to their kids. But rather than it being a European club, it would be a North American club. Finding a story, telling that story, making a difference, developing this sport in this continent, it would just be like a dream come true. Well, to find such passion for football in the suburbs of Toronto has been truly incredible, but there is still one more finalist for this continent. In fact, for the whole In Search Of journey. His name is Perez, and he lives in New York City. Cosmos, 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 come on, yeah! What's going on, Copa fam? My name is Prez. Welcome to the melting pot of all melting pots, New York City. Being a football fan in New York is no easy task. You have to create your own culture. So, I took my love of design, football, and smashed it together. Now I help create banners for my club, the Cosmos. So, this is the famous Brooklyn, right? Yeah. And you live around here? Yeah, I actually live around the corner. Uh, I wanted to show you my place uh, so that we can kind of get a feel for how much the Cosmos and football mean to me. Welcome to Casa del Prez. You made this? Yeah. I sewed it. I, I, I was terrible, let me just tell you. Um, nobody knew how to sew, so I just borrowed a machine and I just had to go with it and it kind of worked. Tell me a bit about active support. Like, obviously, that's a big part of why you love this game. Yeah, active support here, it's, it's, it's the same as if you would find it anywhere else in the world. Um, it's full of passion, it's full of rivalry, it's full of love, it's full of hatred. I want it to be well represented. I want people to know the stories. I want people to know the stories that they probably would have never heard of, you know. As you already know, my club is the Cosmos. We're the smallest club in the city with the biggest history, with players like Pele, Beckenbauer, and Raul, and a rabid fan base to boot. I mean, you definitely got Red Bulls, you got NCYCFC, you never really converted to them? No, no, I mean, they just don't speak to me. I mean, um, I feel as if, you know, it's small, but it's a family club. I, the players, you know, they come to our bar, they drink with us, you know, I can speak to the, the, the CEO of the club whenever I want, you know, I can voice my opinion and it not get shot down. I, I don't need glory. I don't need, you know, all those contracts and big name players that, you know, some clubs in MLS might get, you know, I just need, you know, 
the passion of the fans and, and my boys fighting for me for 90 minutes. Why so much dedication? It's love, it's passion. It's, it's that same passion that anybody else, anywhere in the world feels for their club. It's mine and it belongs to me. Welcome to East River Bar, home of St. Pauli NYC. This is where Cosmos fans, Celtic fans, and St. Pauli fans come together to raise money and give back to the local community. We have a friendship in this city between Celtic, St. Pauli, and Cosmos fans. Uh, we all drink in the same bars. So what we do here is that once a year, we have a huge punk concert. And all the money that's raised goes to cleaning water in Africa through a charity called Viva Con Agua. I want to be active in my community. I also want to feel like the things that I'm passionate about are helping the things that I care about. You've come to New York during Thanksgiving, so we're going to meet my family, uh, have some Thanksgiving food. You should know that they're all Arsenal fans, so watch your back, right? There you go. We're going to get you some goat, some oxtail, some curry chicken. Let's get in here. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving! Why Arsenal? Because Arsenal play the beautiful game. The beautiful game. The way it's supposed to play, the way soccer is supposed to play. Chelsea. This team was not a team. They didn't exist before. I'm proud Who are you? Since no. you're growing up with guys like this, you always gonna love football. I never thought I would be amongst such, such ferocious debate about English London football. I'm in Queens, New York. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what would it mean then, win the job and work for Copa 90? So I feel as if, I, if I were to get this Copa 90 job, I don't care how big your club is, how small your club is, if you have the passion and you have the fans and you're behind your club 100%, I will find you and I will tell your story. And so that wraps in search of Copa 90 and perhaps YouTube's biggest ever project. It's been six continents, 15 countries, 16 cities, all to find new faces to tell the beautiful game. We'd like to thank everyone for being involved, from the finalists to you, the viewers and voters. But just remember, there is still two weeks to vote for everyone from every region. So go back through the series, check out who you liked, and make sure you help decide who joins Copa 90 all around the world.